<laughs> Hello everyone, and welcome back down here to the Gamer's Den. With me, your host, Jordan, your master of lore and storyteller extraordinaire. We're going to be continuing on with our Making Better campaign series, and, well, I wanted to move on to a new campaign setting now. Which one is it? Well, really, there's so many different ones out there, but... Today, I wanted to talk about the war setting. Now, for a war setting, all that's really needed is two or more factions involved with, uh, well, large-scale conflicts with one another, throwing their resources, manpower at, at each other, and uh, just a full escalation of outright warfare. That's not to say that you don't have anything political or some sort of cloak-and-dagger, sneaky-stabby, back, uh, backstabbing, threat-coding throat coating throat cutting kind of action going on but point being the setting is focused on a large scale war now for the most part uh, it's going to be generally two factions involved but uh, things do just get sort of interesting when you have more than that at play but there's a couple of things you need to keep in mind when you're running this. Most, one of the most important of which is avoiding a lot of the uh, little pitfalls that can crop up, but also you want to plan things out decently too. Uh, and you want to think about how you incorporate your players into this. Uh, like anything else, it's just a matter of some details, thought, and planning, and some consideration of how you want to try to avoid letting things get bogged down. And Starting off is uh, one of the most common things is just trying to throw the players into the middle of the combat. It, that can work a little bit, but the thing is, is that in large scale warfare, whether it's uh, medieval armies, uh, high fantasy armies, or modern day armies, or even advanced sci fi civilizations that are trading punches with one another on a galactic scale, things can really get tied up real fast if the players are moving as part of a block infantry unit or as part of you know a platoon or or squadrons upon squadrons of fighters flying and dogfighting through space as capital ships just trade back barrages of laser fire plasma blasts and firing torpedoes streaking all through the vacuum of space there's a lot to keep track of and really just describing all of that you can really get a sense that the setting could be really exciting a lot of fun some really great set pieces that you can throw together there and describe things to get people just amped up and pumped and ready to go for the action but if they're part of this combat this large scale combat it's tempting and sometimes you have to try to keep track of so many different uh initiatives or turn counters and if you do that, things slow down really fast. Uh, even if you try to keep track of it in a squad to squad to squad or or a block infantry unit against block infantry unit, it still is a little bit, uh, it can still get bogged down and tied up really fast and kind of just, even though you've got this awesome stuff happening, it, the players can feel like they're just stuck and kind of more watching the spectacle. It's like watching a 10-minute cutscene in any other video game. And it's especially if it keeps happening and happening and happening. It's like, wow, yeah, great. I wish I were doing that. I wish I could be having a badass moment like that. Instead, I'm sitting here waiting and hoping something happens. And you, you just don't want that. It yanks people out of it, especially after you've taken so much time to construct this narrative and get this setting and this encounter going. So it's better... For in this instance, no matter whether, no matter if it's fantasy, sci-fi, realistic, or entirely fictional, it's better for the larger battle to be the backdrop. Now, how do you let it be the backdrop? Well, one of the simplest ways is the players are essentially heroes or villains, whatever they want to decide to be, but they are a cut above the common enlisted soldier. They are better than they're they're not the they uh, depending on level they may not be the elite troops but they are definitely uh, a co a small cohesive diverse unit that uh, 
commander, intelligent commanders would want to make effective use of, and sticking them in the rank and file isn't going to really work out all that well. Or even if they do, you still want to kind of frame it so that most of the focus is on the players. And so if you're making them a more elite unit, say like, uh, or even a unit that's not tied down with other large blocks of infantry, you can make them uh, a specialized scouting group, uh, uh, skirmishers and the like, and it would make sense for a small elite enclosed team, you know, with a fighter, a rogue type, a cleric, and a mage. You know, that's a fairly effective team right there. It could cause a little bit of damage while still being able to uh, get word back to the larger main group of the army, and so that way the general or whatever commanders are in place can coordinate the rest of the forces around this small scouting unit um it just works a bit better the focus is more centered on the players while the rest of the battle and this combat plays out around them they can even be uh, as they advance in level they can work themselves into a position where they are they are this elite unit they're sent back behind enemy lines to sabotage siege equipment uh, break down artillery destroy supply dumps uh, raid ammo caches uh, hell even killing infantry while their guard is down while they're sleeping or poisoning their food supply killing their horses or stealing all the horses or stealing the enemy plans there's any number of tasks that a small elite unit could be assigned to and that would make a lot of sense and not only would it put the focus solely on the players but the players would be having a tangible effect on the outcome of a battle uh, and it really makes them feel a bit more involved now if you're going to have them as part of a larger block of infantry you still want to keep the focus on them but you have to make them feel like they are part of a unit and typically what i have found works most effectively is the players characters all get to roll their uh, roll their individual initiatives but then the rest of their unit rolls an initiative along with them too versus the enemy unit and i try to handle it on a block unit by block unit basis and then that way there's really only other than the players two separate initiative scores that they have to worry about and all enemy units will be going on whatever initiative score was rolled all allied units will go on their respective initiative score and it just simplifies things and generally what i would do in that case is um, after the respective units have uh, have made their actions then the two I'm sorry, the respective individual characters that may be conflicting with one another have made their actions. Then the individual units will get to roll to see which one is being more effective as a whole, which if the players have been successful in their actions, they will boost the effectiveness of their allies and their allies unit. And they'll represent the fact that their unit is making headway and is, well, performing effectively on the battlefield. So again, it's a way of keeping the focus on the players and making them feel like they're having a tangible effect on the on the overall battle. Now, in this case, it's only for their specific block unit of infantry, their platoon, their squad, whatever the case may be. Whatever the context is, they will still feel like they're having a much more tangible effect on the overall proceeding of things. Even if the uh, larger grand strategy scheme of things, the battle is not going their army's way, their unit is performing with distinction and is being overall more effective in the combat and is making the losses maybe perhaps not quite so bad as they may have been otherwise and again those are just small ways and that's a small thing to do right there but it makes a huge difference when it comes to gameplay really really does i can't emphasize this enough for you and then if to make the rest of the larger battle feel like it's still playing out around them like um, if you're in a setting that allows for any degree of artillery, whether it's old fashioned black powder cannons, high tech uh, indirect fire rocket launchers streaming in missiles from down overhead, uh, air support, or even if it's a wizard standing up on a hilltop directing and calling down lightning to strike down into enemy formations, you can still have random rolls and effects as uh, almost like an environmental hazard that just keeps constantly recurring. And if 
you roll and something strikes in the player's area, whether it's friendly fire or enemy fire, that's when the players have to make a reflex save to try to save for damage. Now, I generally recommend you avoid killing them outright with something indirect like this, uh, indirect environmental hazards, but if there's a player that's ended up low on hit points and they fail a reflex save pretty bad and they take enough damage to kill them, well, I mean, that's, that's war, that's combat, that just happens. Uh, so there cert certainly can be a higher degree of risk involved here should you want it and generally I recommend that you'd have a little bit of that don't outright you know say oh this cannon is aimed specifically at you uh, no that's that's stupid why would they do that uh, the, especially in a larger battle with so many dozens or hundreds thousands upon thousands of troops on the battlefield they would aim just for clusters of infantry units and if the players are part of this cluster then you know there's a chance they may be hit or at least catch a little bit of shrapnel so with the with that in mind as an environmental hazard you can still produce that effect of there's this larger battle waging around them also you know have the players roll perception checks to see it's like oh hey we our units doing good but we've pushed a little bit too far forwards we're forward of the rest of our line we could be flanked and cut off and there's an opportunity there for the players again to have an effect on the battle by getting the rest of their unit to walk themselves back get themselves back into line so that way they can't be flanked or cut off and surrounded um, again so many different little things but you, to, in order to do all this, there needs to be a certain amount of setup and prep time beforehand. You need to have, if not exactly, have an idea of the kind of forces that are arrayed. And again, the context is going to dictate a lot of this, you know, whether it's fantasy, sci-fi, real, or fictional. But you want to have a general idea of the size and scope of the, of the, of the encounter, whether it's just a single platoon or a full-on army group that's uh, engaging in combat with another army group equivalent sized uh, enemy force you're going to want to know generally what's there do they have heavy cavalry light cavalry artillery air support uh, magical support what is arrayed and available here because you can also use these various unit types as more hazards and new and new enemies to break into things like uh Again, if the player's units have walked a have pushed a little too far forward into the enemy, well, there's an opportunity there for enemy ca uh, enemy cavalry to come in and hit them in the flank. Or if they're being pushed back or their units breaking and routing, that's an opportunity again for enemy cavalry to come in and start riding down the rest of the units. And the players, potentially, depending on what they're capable of doing, can uh potentially halt the cavalry charge or they may get caught in the charge and take a good deal of damage from being ridden down by knights on horseback with uh lances or swords or bows or firearms as the case may be or if it's uh if it's a tank coming at them uh, there's a whole nother thing going on there but again a really unique opportunity for you to present different and varied combat encounters constantly flowing through combat and that's the key right there is what's flowing in the course of combat how do you plan that out how do you figure that out well once you have the forces of arrayed you're going to kind of want to pick figure out what the overall strategy is and you figure out the strategy is by determining what the objective is in combat why have this fight why have this encounter here and now because Unless the commanders are stupid, they're not going to be fighting over some pointless bit of land. They're going to fight for an important objective that is going to somehow turn the course of the war for them. Uh, so they're going to be fighting over something important. So what they're going for is going to help is going to uh, dictate why they're there, and then how the enemy's set up is going to dictate 
how the general is moving forwards and then how the enemy general counteracts and so there's an overall flow of battle here and the one of the best ways for you to figure out how things are generally progressing once you figure out what the unit setup is and what the objectives are is get a flow chart for the close of ba uh, flow of battle set in place so that way you know what's supposed to be happening and a good way for you to track how players are having a tangible effect over the course of battle is by having certain avenues and bits of uh, the flow of events change depending on specifically what the players do. Now, again, this is going to depend a bit on their level and what exactly the kind of role you have in place for them is, but you can make things flow a bit better a bit faster and not have to come up with it as much off the top of your head if you know the unit composition what how the army group is set up what the objectives are and know what the different flows of battle are going to look like depending on what the players accomplish and that'll really help you get these set pieces in place and really describe this amazing awesome combat sequence for them as well as any other little things that you may have in place and in store for them but we'll get more into that next time we'll get an actual flow chart set up for you so that way you can kind of have an idea uh, or have some tips strategies or advice on how to get this flow chart set up so that way you know how to have everything flow and progress over the course of gameplay and that's just for one battle one battle could be a series of adventures in and of itself certainly the larger the scale of the fight the longer the battle will likely take unless something truly decisive or catastrophic happens to cause an enemy force to rout or be annihilated but like i said we'll get into that next time i've been your host jordan your master of lore and storyteller extraordinaire if you've been enjoying the video here, maybe consider giving me a like. Or if you've been enjoying the content overall so far, hell, why not subscribe to the channel? We can always use more members down here at the Gamer's Den. And also, if you know anybody that would be enjoying this content like you are yourselves, hopefully, consider sharing the content around with a few people and uh, introduce the channel to them. See what they think. Anyways, thank you all for your time. You guys have yourselves a good night.